Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We are very happy to have with us Will Johnson. Uh, Will is a nationally known platform uh, provider of conservative viewpoints. He has an amazing story to tell us today about what really happened on January 6th. Welcome, Will. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, Will, let's get right into it. You were in the Capitol mob, as it's been called, on January 6th. Why did you go? I, well, I went to the Capitol because President Trump sounded the trumpet telling everyone to get to D.C. on January 6th simply to put a presence of the American people there. Not a single time did he ever call for the violence, but he, he wanted people, he wanted Congress to know that the American people were there. And there was, I, I'm, I'm sticking with it, there was well over a million people there telling Congress to do the right thing. And that's the reason why I was there, to say that, hey, this is our country and we have to stand up for it. You know, before I get into the details, I, we were chatting a few minutes ago that media reports were talking about half a million, which would have made it one of the largest crowds ever. At a million, this puts it up there with the Martin Luther King, I have a dream speech. You were there for American history, Will. Oh, yeah. It was so many people. And this is history in the making. This is history was happening in our country right now. And a lot of people are fearful right now. And me personally, I believe in God. I'm, I know God wins in the end, but there's going to be hard times along the way. So speaking of hard times, uh, there's a story going around, which I haven't asked you yet. So I'll ask you live on air. Did you get maced? I didn't get maced, but I was close enough to where the irritant was in the air and it affected me as well as the people around me to to back away, to move away. So, yeah, there was there was mace and pepper spray. And and who was dispensing it? It was police officers. It and, was police officers. And, and this was on the Capitol steps, Will? Yes, yeah, this was actually uh, on the south side. So to my understanding, the south side, if I got it correctly, the south side is the side that faces the Washington Monument going down the National Mall. And on the north side where the building was, they actually did uh, mace there as well when people were standing in the doorway. Where were you when you when you got a whiff of it? Well, I was on the south side on the grass air, grass area, just standing there with uh, other people. And you can see there's a I have I actually have some video footage of it where there's a police line there and the police are standing there looking at us and they're looking at other people. So no one was fighting with the police from the, on the location out I was at. Um, but, you know, with the flash bangs and the pepper spray, there was a reason why they did it in other locations. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. Watch out. Watch out. It's coming through. Coming through. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. So you got a whiff of what it must be terrible to get into your lungs and in your eyes. Was it in response to a call for violence? Did you hear any violence being advocated? No, I didn't, I didn't actually see uh, people, anybody fighting with police officers. Um, I know some of that took place because police officers were pushing people back. And when I, this, the location I was at, I actually followed some police officers in riot gear and just completely upset with them because they're they're now supporting these criminals that's turning the United States of America into a communist nation. They're 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 not not necessarily supporting them, but they're now they are now working for them. And we call them oath breakers because they're going against the oath that they took. Now, I know a lot of police officers. I talk to police officers constantly and there's a lot of good police officers out there. The, the problem that's going to happen here in the future. The problem is that uh, police officers are going to either quit, they're going to get fired, or they're going to retire. But there's, I mean, it's it's just it's just a miserable miserable state. Who are, who are the people that perpetrated the looting and the violence inside the building? Do you have any sense of 
Well, I, I got it. Yes, I have a strong sense on who that was because for the past four years, there's only been two groups, actually three groups, because the, the third group that I'm including that is that the Democrat Party have it terrorized, and the other two groups is Antifa and BLM. For the past four years, they have terrorized the American people. And not a single time did you hear for the call for mass arrests, not even when they were holding the federal building under siege for over 100 days on the, on the West Coast. For 100 days, they didn't do it. They were trying to burn the building down. There's been cases where police officers were inside of the police department, the Antifa BLM surround the police department, threatened to burn it down, but no mass arrest ever took place. Here, the only reason why they're calling for mass arrest here, and it was Antifa and BLM supporters that went in and caused all the disruption, because if it was Trump supporters, put it this way, if it was Trump supporters, I know I'm going a little round the circle here because it's just so much. If it was Trump supporters that that actually advocated and was doing all this destruction, it would have happened November 4th and would have been happening. But see, that didn't that's not the case. Trump supporters have yet to burn down any cities, burn down any car lots, vehicles, attack people in the street simply because they're Harris Biden supporters. That has never happened. So what took place here, Antifa and BLM took advantage of Trump supporters being upset of them, Congress, turning this nation into a communist nation. So this leads me into my perfect closing question for you. You're right. The summer of 2020 was the most violent of the last 50 years. Yes. And it wasn't in like one city, you know, like Rodney King in LA, you know, it was coast to coast. Yeah. And billions, not millions, billions in riotous damage intentionally caused against businesses of uh, all persuasions, black, white, um, American citizens, immigrants, everybody equally was a victim. And yet, with countless deaths and thousands of people injured and billions of dollars in property damage, you had yep. the now almost vice president of the United States coming out and encouraging people into the streets. And her campaign group was actually bailing out the rioters in Minnesota. Yep. So why is it, Will Johnson, that the attack on the Capitol, which was completely criminal inside the building where there was looting, got cleaned up in a couple of hours and yet has condemnation from every corporate head, every member of the Democrat party, including the president incoming, vice president incoming, the cabinet and many Republicans. And all those voices were silent all summer. Why, Will? Why the double standard? Because the kings and queens sitting on the hill felt threatened. The kings and queens and all of these corporate media outlets, all these corporate businesses, see all of Congress as kings and queens. And the rest of us do not matter. That building, that taxpayer building is owned by the people. But because we have given them so much power, and giving them so much authority over us that we no longer matter. Our voice no longer matters. And this one instance where it was a police officer or a, a Capitol police, from what I can tell, took the life of a young lady. And then they're screaming like, oh, my goodness, domestic terrorists are storming the Capitol. When these same domestic terrorists were terrorizing the American people for the past four years and not a single time, not a single time did you hear the mainstream media, all these corporate businesses talking about they're going to going after these people. Not a single time. It's, almost, it's really, truly 1984. At, and it's not, it's not even at the door any longer. They've opened the door. And what's really, really disturbing is that you have many people on the left that's welcoming all of this tyranny that's coming down onto the American people.
and they don't even realize it. And they're, and they're, what they really don't realize is that they are next. And that's the reason why it's all happening, because they're giving in to communism. It's a sad day, Will. Where can people <laughs> find out about you? UniteAmericaFirst.com. UniteAmericaFirst.com, because that's what we have to do. We have to unite this country first. Well said. And for those of you out there in ATP land that haven't yet subscribed, please whip out your cell phone, get a blank text message, Send the message truth to the number 88202. Push send. You'll be subscribed for free. You'll get all of our content and all of Will Johnson on radio and television here, absolutely free on your cell phone. For ATP Report, thank you for joining us. I'm Bernie Newsbaum.